But I want to show you how to install a roof, the easiest and the cheapest do-it-yourself roof that you can do on a carport, on a lean-to, on a shed, any flat roof for that matter. It took me about two and a half hours to do this roof, and let me take you through the process. The first thing you'd have to do is take measurements. Take you to Home Depot. I'm gonna show you what Home Depot has and the drippage, which I don't like. But I'm gonna take you there, at least get an idea what they sell and what to look for. All right, I'm at Home Depot. And this is what they sell. Look at this. Let me get this roll. All right. Liberty SPS self-adhering cap sheet. That's what they sell. It's a peel and stick roofing. This is the best type of roofing you can have on any slightly slanted roof. Unfortunately, they don't sell the base. These are uh, roofing uh, rolls come as a system, a base and a cap sheet. They only sell the cap sheet. You can do the roof with a cap sheet only. It's not the best. Like I show you on the roof I'm doing right now, I have a base which was lying around, but you could do it without a cap sheet. That's the most inexpensive roof to do, and you can do it yourself. Liberty. To, to come and, and look for a drip, drip cap, Home Depot has the worst, the cheapest drip caps. You can use it, I don't recommend it. Um, this is for shingles. This is for shingles. Very, very flimsy. Let me go here. This is not it, this is not it. This, this is something you could use. Slightly better, what's it called? Drip edge, uh, I don't know, drip edge. I think that's what it's called. Um, a little bit, a little bit more sturdier. I, I think you can get away by using this one. All right, so this is okay. Seven, looks like a 798 per length, 10 foot length. This is the Liberty. The Liberty is $116 per roll, and you get 100 square foot out of each roll. All right, I'll see you on the roof. You can figure out $350 to do a two and a half square roof, $1.50 a square foot. Now there's two ways you can go about this. You can install a base Fly base. See this one? This is from a different company because uh, Liberty or uh, Home Depot don't carry the base, which is essential if you're going to do a good job. You can only install a cap sheet on the plywood and it will work. So you have two options. One, you're going to spend another dollar per square foot, I think. So instead of a dollar fifty, it's going to be two dollar fifty a square foot if you use a base sheet, okay? So I use a base sheet, not everywhere, but on the, on, the, on the perimeter. I want a base sheet. I'm not, I'm not, I don't care which brand it is. Very simple, very nice. And up to my edge. Membrane lined up. It's nice and flat. And I remove the, the release in the back. All right. Just like that. See? I remove it from the back. And that will stick to the plywood. All right. We start at the bottom of a roof, at the lowest part of the roof. and I cut the axis, axis off, just like that. See that? Nice. I'm removing it like that. Okay, and it works nice. Now, what you wanna do is, you wanna measure how much you need before you can cut the corner because I want to go 
I want to go right to that edge there, okay? I want to go right to that edge, hold it there, and then to this corner. Let me see. Right there. I made a mark. Cut. You cut a V to that mark. Okay, a V to that mark. Okay, and then at the kick out at the bottom, straight to that V, you want to make that kick out, cut that little thing there. And then you fold it like that. And look. Perfect. You see that? Look at that. Perfect. Right, nail that down. I just cut straight, a straight cut, not not a V cut, just a straight cut like that. And I bend it. Now look at it, beautiful. I can clean up everything and start doing the the cap sheet. Okay. Somewhere there. Swap my blade, the straight blade, with a hook blade. So that's what you want to do now. You need to have a hook blade like this. You roll it out. Then I, I cut it a little bit longer than I want. And uh, if you stand on one side, like I'm standing on one side here. And you peel out, you peel out the plastic. So then you stand on one side while you're removing the plastic on one half of it, so it doesn't move on you while you're doing. It. You see? And look how nice, beautiful. Oh, yo, yo, heavy, very heavy. Uh, maybe there. Maybe there. All right. Right there. Let me see. Right. So I'm going to cut this. And I put my blade right to the metal. You see there? Right to the metal. Look. See how I cut it? Beautiful. So the next step is to do the flashing. You can see I brought my membrane right to the plywood or to the wall. This is T111, but a little gap there, it's not a big problem. But I'm gonna put a, uh, my flashing here on this, where in the old days you had to cover the flashing with something, counter flash, with, ply, uh, with your siding. In this case, I'm not doing that. I'm going to show you liquid flashing. What I do is I take it, uh, it, it comes with fleece like this. This is polyester uh, fabric. This is the secret to the whole thing. It comes four inches wide. I'm going to do two inches. So I, I take my fleece, I cut it, and then I'm going to cut it in half. I'm trying to cut a two inch width out of this. Okay. You want to make it look nice? You should... Liquid flashing. This is unbelievable. You can put it to wood, to brick, to cement, metal. Ooh, I need to stir this. Ah, it 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 skins over in the can, so you gotta. Expect that inch strip. So, if you want to save money, use a two inch strip like I do here and to cover that corner. Otherwise, a corner will never, you know, every, any transition you make, you need to use the fleece. That is the secret to the whole thing. And then I just coat it again, just that little bit. 
You save a lot of money by doing that. But this will last as long as you have this building. Now, here's my next problem. I should have taken this off and put plywood and make it nice. But this is, water is just going to go in here and leak in there. So I need to fix that. Make sure the water doesn't get in there. Put my fleece there. Anytime you do a transition, you need to put the fleece and voila. Okay. Do the same thing. And that's it. We take this. I want to cut this straight there. Just like that. Okay. That's it. Put that piece of fleece in there. And you're all done. This will cure by tonight. Take it out. So I'm gonna do something I don't never done before. But I'm gonna paint this plywood where I did the turbo poly seal because it's gonna rain tomorrow. So I wanna paint that and the turbo poly seal. And it's it's tacky, you can see it's tacky. I did it this morning like four hours ago. So let's see what happens if I paint it. This is just to show you, it rained all night last night. I couldn't take a video while it was running. It raining, it was too dark. But this morning I came to check two things. I wanna show you, see how nice this sticks to the wood. And then I came to paint it right after I am. Um, and the paint sticks to the, yeah, you cannot take it off. It sticks to the turbo poly seal, even if we're not cured properly. Unbelievable. This is really, really good news because you can paint this regardless if it's cured or not. You can see it's slanted a little bit. I've slanted everywhere so water can run off, but it's so simple to do. Anybody can do it, all right? Help me with thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.